this is a quick introduction to Fika, a game for two players that takes the time of one Fika, a coffee break. Let's have a look at the components of the game. Fika consists of 18 cards. Every card has a color. There are three colors in this game. The colors serve as suits. There are the brown coffee cards, the pink pastry cards, and the orange tea cards. Then cards also have a number. They're all numbered 1 to 6. Cards furthermore also have an action, a goal, and cards with the number 6 also have a special restriction. On the back of the card, the top says multiply by 2, the bottom says multiply by 3. Now we're ready to set up the game. <laughs> To set up the game for two players, you first shuffle the deck of cards. Then take four cards and put them face up on one side of the table. These four cards are your general supply. Check whether two different colors and three different numbers are visible. If so, take two other cards and put them face down on the other side of the table. These are your client cards. The remaining 12 cards are dealt evenly. They become your hand cards. Now notice the fact that between you and your opponent there should be room left for three rows of cards. The row that's closest to you will become your table. So here you will put your table cards. You will have five slots that you can fill. Your opponent has got the same thing. He or she has also got a table with five slots that can be filled. In between those two imaginary tables, there is one row left, and this is the corridor through which the client can move. Now you're all set up to play the game. At the beginning of the round, the starting player chooses the trump color. The opponent then chooses the second trump color. Then both players simultaneously pick one card from their hand and put it face down in front of them. When they have both done so, they reveal their cards to each other and the card with the highest number is played first. Which means that that player puts his or her card in one of his or her table slots and is allowed to execute the action depicted on the card. If both cards have the same number, the order of the colors is the decisive factor to decide which card has to be played first. This goes on and on until both tables are filled or until both players have played seven actions. When they have done so, the round is finished. At the end of the round, players check how many goals they fulfilled on their table. At the bottom of every card, a goal and a value is depicted. So players check card by card whether they fulfilled the goal depicted on the card or not. Notice that the cards in the Fika row are also important. They can in fact multiply a reached goal by 2 or by 3. When all scored goals are added up, you have your total score. If you score higher than your opponent, you're the winner of the round. If you won two rounds, you're the winner of the game. Congratulations! When you want to play Fika solo, you have to make sure there's room for four rows in front of you. The top row will be for the supply cards, the second row is the opponent's table, the third row is for the client cards and the bottom row will be your table. Before you start handing out cards, first give yourself one card of your choice from the deck. Then shuffle the deck and put the five supply cards on the correct place. Watch the video to see which cards have to be face up and which have to be face down. The first card on the left hand side will determine the trump color. You are to determine the second trump color. Then put the opponent's cards on the opponent's table. 
Also check the video to see which have to be face up and which have to be face down. Then put two client cards aside and give yourself the remaining five cards. Basically, the dual rules also apply when you play this game solo. However, some cards have different actions. Check the rule book to know exactly what's different. But when you play, you can always choose one card, put it in one of your preferred slots on your table, and by doing so, you activate the opposing slot in the opponent's table. If the slot on the opponent's table is face down, you flip it face up, and then you compare values and see which action has to be executed first. This goes on and on until your table is filled, and then you can compare scores. If you have a higher score than your opponent, you won that round. If you lost, you lost that round, and to help you a little, in the next round, you will be allowed to choose two cards from the deck. You win the game if you can win two rounds against the opponent.